it seems that Pastor William G. Huffman came back to his Cape Girardeau home fairly late, looking pretty pale and shaken, one night in mid-April of 41. His family was very concerned, so he said, I'll tell you this once, and I will never tell you what happened to me again. He said he received a phone call from someone earlier that evening, presumably from a Cape policeman or police associate, to go to an airplane crash reported outside of town to see if the reverend could offer some amount of spiritual comfort. When the two men got to the crash site, they found a fire blazing being fought by firemen. It surrounded a crashed metal spaceship that was silvery gray and round. It was damaged laying on the ground with metallic debris in the grass. Nearby were three identical gray aliens, almost as if they were uh, released from a cookie cutter. The aliens that we recovered were, quote, incinerated from within. So they could not breathe our atmosphere and had burned their inner organs, and that's why they would appear intact on the outside, as they did in Cape Girardeau. Without any damage to the surface of their bodies. That's correct. The aliens were pulled from the Cape Girardeau crash and Two were set out in the grass side by side, and a third was attempting to breathe. Reverend Huffman said he could see this one's chest going up and down until it finally expired. And two of them were clearly dead and lifeless. A third was gasping for air in the grass, laying on his back, unable to breathe our oxygen-rich atmosphere. None of the three had any visible injuries. Reverend Huffman said prayers over the last creature before it died and went limp right in front of him. Then he got up and he peeked into the spaceship through the damaged hole and noticed its small instrument panel and dials and knobs and even a couple of small seats, along with a silver metal band around the inside of this cockpit or flight deck, and it was studded with odd, indecipherable symbols. At the site were FBI agents, policemen, firemen, and at least two newsmen with big flash cameras blazing and assorted farm people picking through the rubble, one dead alien was actually propped up and posed in a photograph. Can you give a detailed description now from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet of what you have learned from people who saw the photo? There were no feet visible in the photo. However, Charlotte Mann said that when she saw it many times, the creature was being propped up under the arms by two men, one in shirt sleeves, one in a light waistcoat, she calls it. And the creature had a large bulbous head with big black shiny eyes, just almost like a doll's eyes. And it had almost no nostrils, maybe tiny dots, and a slit for a mouth, just very tiny. Long, thin arms and legs, and gray with a crinkly, silvery-looking skin or coating of some kind, or flight suit and that it clearly had the three fingers and one long thumb per hand in a flash photo. The person who took the picture, according to Reverend Huffman, stuck the uh, camera back in his shirt pocket where he had found it. This was his second camera. He was also using a large speed graphic type flashbulb camera as if he was a newsman. And this same person came to the Huffman home two weeks later and handed over a copy of the photograph he took with the smaller camera and said, I have a copy of this. I want you to have a copy of this. That confusion about using the large flash camera and a smaller camera, does that reinforce for you the possibility that this person taking photos at the extraterrestrial crash site in Cape Girardeau was working for a military agency? I find it very likely this was a local newsman who was called and uh, rushed to the site, and he was a big photo camera bug, and he had one with him that was a smaller one, but he had a working news-type camera with a flash attachment and was taking pictures at that time with it and maybe ran out of camera film is what I'm thinking, why he produced a second smaller camera that he smuggled past the Army and got out of the site. Paul, why wasn't this on the front page of every Missouri newspaper the very next day with the photo or photos this man took? Apparently, according to Reverend Huffman, everyone was sworn to secrecy. And when you think about it, if you were to come forward after the crash when everyone else was sworn to secrecy and say, I was there, I took pictures of a flying saucer that crashed in aliens, you would probably be uh, drummed out of your job and out of your church and... uh, 
you would lose your way of life in the area and probably lose the respect of people who had no idea that it was the truth. But the evidence would have been there. It would have been the photo in the paper, and it could have cracked it open, and the truth could have been there right back in April of 1941. I find it very possible that uh, someone went to the editor of the Cape Girardeau newspaper and told him, you will not run this story. I don't care if you did hear from your newsman who told you all about it. It's interesting to note that President Harry Truman invited the editor and owner of the paper, the publisher, to the White House twice during his presidency. And when his presidency was over, he visited the newspaper's headquarters in Cape Girardeau twice. And on one visit, the report in the paper said, Harry cleared the room of all reporters, friends, and aides to both men and wanted to discuss something that was very secret between himself and the newspaper owner, and it was never revealed later. The Army showed up, surrounded the site, and took people off to the side in groups to warn them and swear them to silence. Do not speak of this. This never happened. This is a matter of national security. You will keep your mouth shut. Put down all notes and photos and debris. So they did as they were told, including Reverend Huffman. And he left with his police associate and went home. And that's when he told the story that night. And as I said, he apparently kept his mouth shut for the rest of his life. Two weeks later, after the crash, a photographer walked up to the Huffman home on Main Street in Cape and gave William a copy of a snapshot he took with a secondary smaller camera he kept hidden in his pocket. It was of the alien being propped up by two men in civilian attire. One man was in shirt sleeves. It was so warm. It was the gray, big-headed alien in the picture, about four feet in height, and it scared Charlotte when she saw it about a dozen or so years later. Charlotte Mann was his granddaughter. Correct. She claimed she saw the picture at least 12 times, maybe more, when she was a little girl growing up in a small town in Kansas. Her father would trot out the picture at family parties, and she heard little mentions of this Cape Girardeau UFO crash incident. Was the person calculated on the part of counter-intel to befriend the father specifically to get the photo and never return it? Well, Reverend Huffman's son, Guy Huffman, ran a furniture store in a small town in Kansas. Across the street was an insurance salesman, and his name was Walter Wayne Fisk. And Mr. Fisk struck up conversations in this small town with Guy Huffman, and the subject came around to extraterrestrials. And that's when Guy Huffman mentioned he had a photograph that he wanted Mr. Fisk to take a look at. Fisk was most keen to see it came over to a dinner party one night and said, well, this is most interesting. I'll take it home and look at it more closely since I'm a photographic expert and I'll tell you whether I think it's a fake or not. He did not only not return the picture, he left town shortly thereafter and they never saw him again. There was a story in the Los Angeles Times a number of years ago that revealed that AIG Insurance Company was invented as a front for American intelligence to squeeze information out of Americans. It was co-run by General William Donovan, who worked for Franklin Roosevelt, and they would send intelligence agents out into the field posing as insurance agents to get Americans to talk about their personal and private lives and feed back the information to intelligence headquarters. It could be that Walter Fisk was one of these agents an Army intel officer who was working in insurance to gather information. And when he found the photograph, at least in theory, he hit the jackpot. He knew that this was something that had to be scooped up and gotten away from the Huffman family and away from the entire American public. That's a hypothesis. What is the best information about where the three dead small gray alien bodies were taken and where was the damaged craft taken? Apparently, they were all taken by the Sykeston Missouri Institute for Aeronautics, an Army air base that was called in that night. The Sykeston MIA Army people were involved, and it's interesting to note that um, Charles Root was in charge of the Sykeston MIA air base and that he was transferred to Sykeston directly from Big Shots in Washington, D.C. So if the crash happened that night, that might explain how someone could have contacted 
the nearest air base, which was in Sykeston, about uh, 35, 40 miles away from Cape Girardeau, and how they could have gotten direct orders from Washington to go into the site, take everything over, and haul it back to Sykeston, where it was held probably for about a day or two and flown out.